Welcome to this week's Desmond's Donders Photo Diary. Why not join us on our Donders? Welcome to this Desmond's Donders Memory Monday and another video that is too long for Throwback Thursday. We'll look back using some early photographs and early videos at one of our early trips in Desmond. Diary, 22nd to the 24th of April. Well, it was another long haul this weekend. A haul 6.1 miles. We're going to Port Gordon Harbour. This weekend we have an extra passenger, Spidey our cat. She is with us for the first time. She settled quickly on the first night and found places to sit and look out. However, she did not eat when we first arrived and uh, I have to say, she did sulk. We spent Saturday bird watching, taking pictures and relaxing. We saw our first swallows, house martins and sand martins. So despite the snow, summer must be on its way. Cold, wet and windy, but Lindsay made pancakes.
Port Gordon is a village in Moray, Scotland, southwest of Bucky. It was established in 1797 by Alexander Gordon, the fourth Duke of Gordon, as a fishing village. It had a population of 844 at the time of the 2011 census. Currently, the Port Gordon Community Harbour Group is trying to regenerate the harbour and to open a marina. The original harbour of 1797 was constructed with wooden piers. Both fishing and an import-export trade thrived and Port Gordon became the principal port in the area. In 1859, the Duchess of Gordon presented a barometer for the use of the fishermen and it was installed at the harbour. It was to Charles Gordon Lennox, the 6th Duke of Richmond, that the Harbour Committee turned in the late 1860s when the condition of the harbour was deteriorating and generally becoming inadequate for the increasing traffic. He agreed to pay for reconstruction if the fishermen would insist with transport of materials from Lossiemouth. The new harbour would enclose three acres and cranes were to be installed for the first time at Port Gordon. Construction took place between 1870 and 1874 and subsequently over 100 boats were registered in the harbour. Success was short-lived though and the number of boats was in decline by 1881 due to competition from new harbours in Bucky and Buckpool. By 1904 the harbour was beginning to silt up and boats were having to wait for the tide to be able to enter the harbour. The 7th Duke of Richmond was asked to build an extension to the Eastern Pier to stop the beach from washing into the harbour, but only dredging was carried out in 1906 and 1907. In 1908, the harbour was offered to the community along with £2,000 to pay for the extension. This offer was turned down, many villagers fearing the maintenance cost. In 1935, ownership of the harbour transferred from the Gordon Lennox family to the Crown Estate, when Frederick Gordon Lennox, the ninth Duke, sold his Scottish estates to pay crippling death duties. By 1945 there were only 14 fishing boats in the harbour and there was little commercial activity. Crown Estates Commissioners closed the harbour in 1947 and it was thereafter used by only a few pleasure craft. 
The structures were further damaged in the North Sea floods of 1953, and by the late 70s the northwest corner was breached and the mouth of the harbour was seriously silted up. Funded by various grants, the 69th Gurkha Independent Field Squadron rebuilt the harbour between 1985 and 1989. After lunch on Sunday, and the best of the weather, we headed for home. Spidey's first trip went well, just a couple of small changes to living arrangements to make things work better, and we'll be well away, and Spidey will be coming with us. Birds and wildlife. Mallard, Ida, red throated diver, cormorant, turnstone, purple sandpiper, red shank, wood pigeon, jackdaw, carrion crow, sand martin, swallow, house martin, blackbird, pied wagtail, rock pipit, and chaffinch. Thank you for watching Desmond Starters. We'll hope you'll join us again for more photos, waffle, and video as we travel around Scotland. Bye for now.